Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, beautiful, gorgeous, resplendent, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are gathered here today to talk Seeking Sister Wife. We are on Season 5, Episode 11, Honey, Mm. entitled Seeking A connection, a sexual connection. Yes, sensual seduction. Yes, and I think that's probably referring to Nick and Jasmine in Denver, Colorado. Gross. But it could be Justin and Yari. They're also gross. It could be them Sherwoods and that Sarah girl. Mm. Sorry, honey, it ain't going to work out. Nope. We're going to get into all of that. Yeah. Now, before we do, we have to remind you, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words, although we're going to try and work on that. Yeah, she told me Especially you. Yeah, I get it. You got a potty mouth, honey. I get it. Uh, We also have stupid opinions. And so if you're so silly you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. But if you're down to party, welcome to this one. And if you are down to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party is at, okay? So much content. Oh my God, so, so much. much fun. So much. Now, if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and to comment and to share and subscribe. Everything you do helps us in the algorithm and that helps us to grow the dumpster. The bigger we get, the more we can do this. Exactly. Can you imagine a world when we do this full time? When I can quit my job and not have yes. to do that anymore and I All can do this? All we do is talk mad shit on the internet. That's the dream, baby. So all of you and your likes and your comments and your shares, it really, really does help us. So thank you. Thank you. In advance. All right. Is there anything we want to talk about before we get into the episode? Because there's a little bit of gossip. What is it? Yeah, about Naeem and Nyla. Oh, that's right. So there's this Reddit post going around. It's a screenshot and it's from this chick named Alicia Melvin, who's like the host of a podcast called Black Aristocrats. And she commented, I think on Instagram and said, Naeem and Nyla are first cousins. And in fact, they're actually my first cousins. She said, Naeem has two kids from a prior relationship. Nyla has three kids from a prior relationship. And now they have one kid together as first cousins. From their incest love. They're incestuous, allegedly. Which is nasty. It's pretty nasty. That's disgusting. But I mean, there's a lot that's kind of coming out about them because we've been talking in previous episodes about them potentially allegedly being squatters who are running from house to house to house to avoid having to pay their rent and their judgments. And now they're cousins. Yeah. First cousins, too. Wow. Allegedly. Allegedly. We don't know that for sure, but I'm not going to kind of see it. I mean, I knew a girl (laughs) in high school that dated her first cousin, like, for real, for real, dated her mm-hmm. first cousin. And she was out and proud about it. Really? She was telling everybody at the school, oh my God, my first cousin, he's so hot. Uh, <laughs> I love him. They were together for like three years. Wow. Banging in the boom, boom room no. and everything. No. And people are like that, man. It's freaking weird. I guess if your first cousin is hot. Ew. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a Apparently, they're first cousins. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> so we thought we would pass that on to you, and you can do with that what you will. Yeah. Now, before we get into this episode, is there any like major takeaway that you have, Beatrice? Oh, God. Nick and Jasmine's date. I texted you this when I was watching it before Discovery Plus went down earlier today. Yeah, what the hell was that How about? rude. But anyway, I cringed so hard at that. That date, Nick and Jasmine's date just affirmed my homosexuality <laughs> because I was like the straights are grossing you out again I was so I felt violated I felt so creeped out yeah, well was it me or was he like staring at her titties a lot like overtly just staring at her titties and her booty and yes, stuff yes he was not shy about it at all so weird. Very strange. I thought this man would have a little bit more riz, as the kids would say. A little bit I of class. A little bit more class, because he puts an air like that he is. Like, he kind wears of. fucking suits and shit. I know, but they look mismatched and <laughs> weird, and his, like, extra big collars on his shirts. I'm like, ooh. Well, even his outfit to the date, it was like his shirt was all 
loose and baggy, not even buttoned up. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, he thinks he's doing something. He thinks he's a fancy man. And do we think Jasmine is actually into him? I know we're going to talk about it, but do we think like she's actually vibing with him or is mm. she just trying to be on my television? I don't know. I couldn't get a read on her because there were some parts where I'm like, I don't think you're into him. But then you're saying about how attractive you think he is. And I'm like, oh, are we seeing really? the same person? He looks like Gollum. <laughs> He looks like he's slithering out from behind a rock. He looks like Sid from Ice Age. The, the, the he looks sloth. like Beetlejuice from Howard Stern. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just, I'm not getting it. Like, Jasmine, you're a young woman. You are in your late 20s, early 30s. You got your whole life ahead of you. You really want to, you really want to strap yourself down with Nick and those three interchangeable white women? I know. Okay. I can't relate. Well, my main takeaway was that it really felt like this was the season finale for the Shibooties. Oh. Mm. Because like when they're going to bed, they're like playing weird music. Yeah. And they're talking about how they're not going to stop trying to pursue an extra partner. And also for the Sherwoods. Yeah. Because we see what happens with them and with Sarah. And then all of a sudden she's had her baby. Right. And they're moving on. So I don't think we're going to see them again. Honestly, I'm and fine with care. that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. You're I'm boring. not going to miss them at all. Yeah. Bye. So I, it feels like we only have a, a couple more episodes before this whole thing is over, right? Yeah. I think we it's only have done. like maybe three. That's what people are reporting online. They're saying there's going to be 14 episodes total. So we okay. got three more weeks of this. All right. Well, we got to get back to the Merry Fields. Oh, They're girl. up to no good. Yes. We got to check in with them. But let's get into this episode, honey. All right. Well, let's start with the Davis family because they were the top of the episode with that carriage ride, that romantic carriage ride in downtown Denver. Okay. Or yes. something. Yes, downtown Denver. And first and foremost, that is such a cringy idea for a date. Secondly, I don't think that that's good for the horses. I think it's right? some kind of horse abuse. And I don't think they're happy. And so no. why are you taking this horse out and about around Denver? And third of all, you all look grungy. <laughs> Gross. And I'm not feeling any sexual chemistry. I'm feeling Ugh. awkward. It was trashy. And their conversation was so but bizarre to me because nick is the one that brings up religion and spirituality like right off the bat right and he's like we prefer to think about our spirituality and our religion um through the basis of science because we want to be grounded in reality right i'm like okay but meanwhile he's got his metaphysical youtube that i went and looked at and i mean he's talking about all kinds of crazy things yeah like soulmates and things like that and i'm like okay like what are you talking about meanwhile jasmine she's just like yeah like science has really proved a lot of things like <laughs> pa pandemic like bacteria <laughs> like virus like all of that is real yeah. like are we really having this conversation <laughs> she literally said there's some validity to it i'm like oh to, only to some <laughs> okay <laughs> Right. Good Lord. And then she starts talking about her religious beliefs, which I'm sorry, but that was a little woo woo for me because she said, for there, you? Yeah. Okay. Was, she's like, well, I'm pagan, which is fine. That's mm -hmm. totally fine. My mom's a reverend who studied eight religions. That's also cool. Yeah. But then she starts talking about the goddesses that she has around mm -hmm. her. One's a Buddhist goddess. Kuan Yin. And the other one's an African Oshun. goddess. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's cool. But I just, it feels very spiritually trendy yeah like there doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of depth there and she's talking no. about how she's not like other girls because she's kind of out of this world at all times <laughs> i'm in the astral somewhere and i'm like oh cringe cringe and her scorpio gold chain necklace i'm like yeah that's real classy yeah <laughs> really it's not does. real gold no heads up not at all no she got it at the jc penny that's right and then nick the whole entire time is just oogling her oogling, oogling her. her yeah so gross and he's like you're really beautiful oh my god i'm really attracted to you can i kiss you i know i forgot <laughs> about that i blotted it from my consciousness I and know. then they start making out in public in front of everybody and it was so cringe and i was watching jasmine closely like are you into this sister and i'm feeling like she's not i know it felt and weird truly how could she be i know but then she's saying shit in her interstitial like he's easy on the eyes oh, okay if you're I blind i could stare at him for a really long time i'm like okay. no Ew. 
But I mean, to each his own. Like we're coming off very judgy. Like we're allowed to. Nick is an erudite. He's a very intelligent, philosophical person who's able to have deep conversations allegedly. (laughs) Like, and so maybe that adds a layer of attractiveness for Jasmine, or maybe it's DLC. Uh, yeah. Or maybe it's the money she thinks she's going to be making. That's what I'm thinking. Which is no money, Jasmine. None. Sorry to tell you. Not at all. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what intelligent conversation did they have during this whole date? Literally none. Besides him saying that she's hot and that his sex is powerful. Because after the whole <laughs> carriage ride and making out with her behind this horse's butt, then they go and get like a drink or something. Yes. And he's like, yeah, I'd really love for you to come stay the night in my bed. The weekend. Yeah. Now, granted, we know she has like an 11-year-old son, Uh right? Yeah. So is she supposed to bring the son? Is it just her? And this is where she tells him to kind of slow your roll. Like, the one thing I'm going to ask from you is for some patience. Uh Like, And you're not going to have access to this (laughs) body-yaddy-yaddy until you have access to this mind. I can't. He's like, oh, you both are just terrible. <laughs> You're so truly terrible. terrible. This is why I don't miss being out on the dating scene. Oh, my God. Having these cringe AF conversations with randos in Not Denver. Been there, done that. Oh, God. Not with a Nick Davis, though. I'm sure no, you no. went out with more high quality men. You know, ones that had jobs. Yes. <laughs> At the very least. <laughs> that could actually Indeed. pay for the date. Yes. Because that was so cringe, too, because they're like, I think he drove her or his wives drove her. I don't know what they did, but they paid for this whole date. It's well, really TLC cringe. did. Well, TLC the wives, did. Maybe. <laughs> I'm they sure did the not pay for all of his. But other like dates. in their hypothetical universe, like if he's going out to look for these women, yes, the three wives that you have at home who are all gainfully employed are the yeah. ones putting the money in your pocket so you can go and and kiss on this woman, and Ugh. so they're paying for your date. But they seem happy to do so because, as we know and have established. Some of them want to eat a box. Oh, for sure. So it's not just for Nick. There's other things happening in the 12-foot bed, honey. There has to be. Yeah. Because it's so weird otherwise. But whatever. Their date. I guess Nick had a fun time. He was kind of making some weird comments like about how she's very unique. A little too special. Well, she talks about how nothing comes easy, even eating, because I often (laughs) asphyxiate on my own food. And he's like, Like what? Oh, my God, slow down and chew your food. (laughs) Like, why is that even happening? Maybe she has a tiny esophagus like Sutton on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. You'd have had to watch it. But um, that's bizarre. Yeah. But I did get from him a judgy vibe. Totally. Like the Salahuddin's with... What was her name? Alexis, I think. Like Mm -hmm. how they were just judging her the whole time. Like I felt like at times he was doing the same thing to Jasmine, which you have no right to judge anybody else and their beliefs and their way of life. Nick. I know. That's what I felt too. It was very weird. And I'm like, who are you, Mr. Unemployed? Uh Uh-huh. I like, I don't even think he does taxes. I doubt he does. Because he's got these other wives married to each other. So they're doing taxes. I'm like, are you like (laughs) one of those Alaskan bush people that's like hiding from the government? (laughs) Got no social security card. Maybe. (laughs) It's a good gig if you can get it. I mean, hey, these other wives are allegedly consenting to it. So Mm -hmm. whatever. And then after the date, he heads home. He's got a big old smile on his face. Mm -hmm. And he's greeted. By Danielle, yeah, who stayed up because she couldn't sleep. Because she's jealous, mm-hmm. because she's wondering what Nick is doing, mm-hmm. where's Papa Nick at? So he walks in and she starts asking questions about the date and primarily wants to ask, like, well, did you kiss her? Like, was there any kind of intimacy? And he's like, yeah, we did. And yeah. also, I want to invite her over for a night to just see how we all click together. And Nick says that he's really concerned with Danielle in particular, her opinion Mm -hmm. and whether she feels okay with this. And Danielle lets him know that she's fine with it. Yeah. But to the camera says, I feel like I'm always telling people what they want me to say. That's what's so frustrating Mm -hmm. for me about her because I'm like, just be honest, because it's just going to blow up Mm -hmm. when you actually see this girl, because we've seen the previews of her being like, I'm going to shake this up. Mm -hmm. And we saw the previews this week of her jumping on their 12 foot bed. And I'm like, how is that going to work? Yeah, but we saw the preview also of Nick kind of swimming across the hot tub to kiss her. And she like kind of went like that she She did did. not seem into it no because it was very forceful and in front of all the women i'm Mm. like it's so weird Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't like nick like 
up until this point, I've been kind of like whatever about the Davis family. I thought that they were the only ones on all of the seasons of Seeking Sister Wife that seemed like the most, I don't know, happy with their situation. Like Mm -hmm. everybody seemed to mutually benefit. It seemed like a good system for everybody. I don't agree with it, but like whatever. But now after this episode, I'm like, oh, Nick's a sleazeball because as he's in there saying like, oh, yeah, I really care about your feelings, Danielle. And like, I worry about you, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, thanks. I appreciate that. He's like, well, I can take the stress off of you. We can mm-hmm. go to the boom, boom room. Yep. Ugh. Yeah. Right after the date. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because he's a horn dog. And yeah. He's got a bony totes and he wants to do something with it. Yeah. And then balls is blue. And so, Danielle, I mean, any port in a storm, you're up. So why Ugh. don't we go to the boom, boom room? It's your turn to get some sunlight from your oh orbit. My God, so gross. Yeah. And he smacks her ass on the way to the boom, I boom know. room. Well, she's happy to go, oh. though. And you always get what you settle for. And Danielle, if you're going to settle for this bullshit, then this is what you get. Facts. But do you think his sex is really as powerful as he was no. claiming to Jasmine? His sex is powerful magic. I'm my like, God. no. I mean, if I have to open my eyes and see your face, it's not powerful. <laughs> it's traumatizing know. to me. It's traumatizing. <laughs> we get to the Sherwoods next. These people pissed me off this week. Really? Go off. Well, let's talk about what happened. So yeah. they're actually sitting on the couch doing their interstitial and they're kind of talking to, and updating the cameras with like where they are. And previous to this, they had had the conversation with Sarah, which is the young woman who agreed, I think, under duress while the cameras were on to be exclusive in a relationship with them, i.e., I won't date other people while I go out on dates with you. I don't think that means what they think it means, Mm -hmm. but this is what happened and they're happy. But while they're sitting on the couch, her phone starts going off and Shane says, like, pick it up. And it happens to be Sarah who's calling her and calling her and texting her. So they pick it up while they're on the couch. And Sarah's like, yeah, can I come on over? There's something I need to talk to you about. And immediately, I know, you about to be dumped. I'm surprised she had the integrity, Sarah, to actually show up and do this face to face. Yeah. But at the same time, I loved it because it was an opportunity for her to actually call them out for being weirdos. Yes. So Sarah comes over, they all go outside, they sit down on their little lawn chairs. And she basically says like, look, I can't do this with you. Like, it feels like you guys are requiring this very quick attachment. But that's not fair to me Mm -hmm. to have to attach to you. Like, that isn't how it works for me. Like, I need to take my time. And the way she says it is like, I have had one date with you, Ashley. And then I met you, Shane. And then I think she came over for the fucking big meeting. And Mm -hmm. that's it. Yep. So in that amount of time, they are expecting this level of commitment from her. And so she calls them out on camera and she's like, I'm not into it. I don't want to pursue it. No, thank you. I loved it. Honestly, Mm -hmm. I thought it was very cool that she went over the very next day because last episode she was straight up saying in her interstitial, I felt pressured to say yes in the moment because they were coming on pretty hard and wanting an answer. And I don't really know how I feel. So I'm glad she figured it out and immediately went and talked to them. But Ashley starts crying like immediately. And this is why we have to go back to the fact that she's a psychiatrist. Yeah. She's a medical professional, which is why I loved that Sarah did it this way, because she's talking to a medical, prof- a mental health professional about attachment and what you're asking somebody else to do. And to the camera, Sarah even says it felt real controlling. Yeah. And it is controlling, especially on Shane's part. Mm-hmm. But like Ashley is a psychiatrist. This isn't normal. Mm -mm. This isn't how relationships evolve and develop in a healthy way. No. What are you doing? I know. And I know she's pregnant in these interstitials and stuff. And so I'm sure that's why her emotions are kind of up in the air. But at the same time, I'm like, you had two dates with this chick. You kissed her twice. Like, why are you crying over her being like, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not really ready to commit. I understand it being disappointing. But Shane and Ashley's reactions, especially Shane, Mm -hmm. was so over the top like Mm -hmm. he's like straight up like swearing getting so mad Like, what kind of a person does this a shit person that's the kind of person that does this like they immediately go into their kitchen after sarah leaves and and talk shit and talk shit about her and i'm like it's the most reasonable thing i've seen on this entire series what are you talking about ashley you should know that but shane who the fuck do you think you are you're weirdos yep you're asking this young woman to make all these sacrifices and she doesn't even know you not at all this lady is heavy with (laughs) doubt Happy about to give birth. And yeah. I'm, like, you want me all up in that? No, I, I can't. No. So I just, I felt like the audacity 
to judge her, just like the Shabooties did with yes. Alexis. And I'm just like, this is wild. You and people it, are wild. They are really crazy. And I think like part of Shane's frustration is because he's having to watch his prego wife go and make out with women in front of him and he's like asking for commitment so she doesn't have to keep going on dates but then at the same time i'm like use your big boy words and say it in a nice mature way as a 30 something year old man like why are you cussing this chick out after Mm -hmm. two dates wild and acting so surprised that she's doing this within 24 hours of your big conversation at the dining table well i'm like don't you want her to be absolutely honest with you as quick as possible so you guys don't start making plans with this girl and he's just very upset about it. Yeah. He just can't believe that it happened. But it sounds like it happens a lot to y'all. Mm-hmm. It sounds like this kind of thing happens to all of these couples constantly yeah. getting dumped by their thirds and their fourths. Well, because you guys are fucking weird. Mm-hmm. That's why. Yeah. And all y'all come on too strong. Mm-hmm. I even saw a Reddit post earlier today. It was like saying, why do all of these couples like demand commitment and demand loyalty like right off the bat? Like chill. Yeah. Maybe it's because they think they need it for these weird alternative lifestyles. But I'm like, y'all need to calm the fuck down. Mm -hmm. Honestly. It's a huge turnoff. And I was like so happy that Sarah did that. And I'm so happy. She called them controlling. I'm so glad that it was all on camera. You guys should be embarrassed. Yep. Oh, Mm -hmm. I'm sure they are. Because then the very next scene, we flash forward to the future. Mm Mm-hmm. Ashley has her baby. Yeah. And then they've decided that they're going to just pause the whole sister wife Mm -hmm. thing indefinitely for right now. Thank you. You should have been doing that because Shane has cancer. Well, the good news is, I guess there was a post on Reddit and they shared that Shane is cancer free. Yeah. So that's great. Yes. But I mean, he was at the time going through this huge process. She was heavy with child. She's giving birth. She's postpartum. There's a lot going on that you all could focus on. Yeah. Much less decorating your home. I know. You're a psychiatrist. You're an MD. What's going on anyway? I was noticing. But um, yeah, they felt very, they they just felt very weird to me. Yeah, because they are. And I feel like they were embarrassed on TV. So that made me very happy. Honestly, me too. And I hope we don't have to see them again because Ashley's so aggravating to me. Shane too, but like I give him a pass because he has cancer and stuff. Ashley, fuck her. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't with her. And even in her interstitial, she's like, I'm still interested and mm-hmm. in exploring my bisexuality, but not right now. Right. Well, and that's her saying, I would love to come back for another season, though. I would love to eat Seeking Sister spot. Wife. Yes. Cringe. And then we have the Shabooties, and mm-hmm. we have the aftermath of the whole fight with Jamila at lunch. So they all head home with Jahari, and they kind of talk about all of it. And again, Johari is the best. Mm-hmm. She's like so based. She calls Nyla out for being disrespectful right. to Miss Jamila and says, we need to learn healthier communication habits, bitch. Which I thought was great because you know Nyla loves to lecture somebody about maturity uh-huh. and how to act. And it was great just having the presence of Johari. Like she has a certain presence about her, like essentially telling her that what she did was wrong. Mm-hmm. But I just kept reminding myself that this is the first time Naeem and Nyla have met Jahari. They've talked online on some rando forum. This woman agreed to go with them to meet his mother, having never met them before, and partake in all of this. And I'm just like, this is such a weird conversation for this unknown woman to come back to your house and then start downloading you about how you guys are acting crazy out here. I know, super weird. Yeah, but that's kind of how life is nowadays like i know a lot of people who have like strictly online friends or even like clayton from 90 day fiance Mm -hmm. who's had this best friend for 13 years never met him in person and they only speak online but then they act like like real people when they're together like jahari's acting like a bff like Mm -hmm. she's like calling them out on their shit i'm like dang i think she's aware of the cameras i think she probably thinks that thinks that they're ridiculous oh naeem and nyla yeah oh yeah because they are yeah i think what we're getting from jahari isn't like actual real friendship for these people Mm. it's just like oh i'm on camera and i'm gonna just try and present myself in the best possible light Mm. as possible and call out some more shit while i'm here yeah i mean why would you want to be friends with naeem and nyla personally well and nyla takes this opportunity to throw jamila under the bus again Mm -hmm. like she doesn't even know how to say my daughter's name and i'll worry about my daughter like she doesn't even see my daughter 
And I'm like, you go in pretty hard on a woman that you are forcing repeatedly. You're forcing this woman into encounters, which, by the way, Jahari calls out, like, mm-hmm. why are you trying to shove this down her throat is what yeah. she says. And like, thank you. Hello. That's my question. Yep. And they have nothing to say to that. No. Th- I think Naeem is like, well, my thought is that if I go over to her house, I don't want her to be blindsided. But I'm like, you're still forcing her to try and accept it, though. So you're blindsiding her so that you don't blindside her. You're just repeatedly blindsiding her. Like, what's wrong with you people? It doesn't make any sense. And if you guys are first cousins, like, actually, no wonder Jamila doesn't like Nyla. And no, like, I just thought about that just now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Seems very weird to me. And your incest baby. And so maybe that's why she doesn't see the incest granddaughter. That is so terrible. I know, but... But maybe this whole thing is something she's side-eyeing and she's just at her wit's end. And now they've got her out here in the raccoon streets on camera trying to provoke her all the time. And Jahari's just calling it out like, stop it. Yeah. You don't need to do all that. Y'all are grown. It's super weird. And then Jahari's like, okay, I gotta go. Bye. Y'all are fucking crazy. And then Naeem and Nyla go to bed. And act like, oh, it's fine, whatever. We'll we'll keep trying. Because I really believe it. <sighs> I'm like, do you? And this is the scene where they were playing the music like that it felt like this was the season finale. Like we're not so going to see them for the rest of the season. But then I thought to myself, didn't we see a scene with Nyla stalking off away from the couch, being really upset? And didn't something happen at a dinner as well? Yeah. Where she got upset? I thought we saw that in a preview. Yeah, it wasn't a preview because Naeem was talking about how he wanted to be intimate with this girl in front of Nyla and Nyla Mm. was not happy about it. Right. So they better get back to that because I've been waiting for that. Yeah. Don't show us a preview and then don't show us the scene. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that shit so much. And then last but not least, we have the Ryans. We haven't seen them for a while. And thank goodness, because they are so icky and creepy. Super creepy. Especially Becky. Oh, my God. With her weird cult smile. I know. And she's being all creepy with her daughter and her sister-in-law picking out a dress because she's going to go on a group date with Yari and Justin. And it also happens to be Yari's 42nd birthday. Right. Which is... A terrible way to spend your birthday. It (laughs) sounds like that to me. But like (laughs) Becky's trying to be really careful because she really wants to demonstrate to Yari that she's the kind of person that can let her have the attention on her special day. Mm. Like it's not just about Becky. It's about you. And I'm just like, oh, honey. Very weird. Yeah. Super, super weird. She picks out a dress and then they go to dinner. And this was the most awkward thing ever because they're like barely talking justin is so boring and he's literally the worst he's Yari, got nothing no nothing what does he all. offer to any woman does he even work who is this person maybe he's got money maybe he's they got don't a have big money do you see his house they don't have money he ain't got a big dick honey all he has is he's a gym bro and he yeah. thinks he's he thinks he's hot he thinks he's but hot. like absolutely brings nothing to the table and then there's becky i know you're fucking <laughs> espadrilles on clomping into the restaurant in her dowdy dress thinking she's hot i'm like you guys are the bizarre bizarro world they're super weird and they give me swinger vibes i don't know what it is i think it's because it's becky i mean they are so creepy and they sit at the table justin's like low energy yari doesn't even really Mm -hmm. say anything it's super freaking awkward because if y'all recall, Yari didn't even know that Justin was polygamist right. until their second date or whatever. And so she feels freaking awkward. Right. And they're trying to play it off like, oh, she must not have looked at the whole profile. She must not have seen our pictures. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking to myself, self, these people didn't mention it in that profile and mm-hmm. they didn't include any of those pictures. Of course not. So here's Yari, this poor victim sitting there at the table with these creepers. But I'm also wondering, like, why did you agree to do this, Yari? I don't know. She seems really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They're obviously not speaking a lot. There's not a great rapport. Like, why are we doing this? It's super weird. And Justin in his talking head's like, yeah, she's not her usual talky, flirtatious self. And I'm like, was she to begin with? Because I saw that date with you last time where you essayed her from (laughs) forcing yourself to kiss her. Shoving your face into her face. Yes. Well, did she not realize that Becky was coming? I don't know. Like, is that something maybe she didn't know because she just seemed really put out? Yeah, it was very weird. And then Becky, of course, being the intense personality, as she calls it, just goes right into all of the questions. So what do you do for fun? And Yari's answer, after work, I go gym. Mm -hmm. (laughs) eats chips and salsa Mm -hmm. i'm like oh my god can you bring any more to the table right and like how was your date i mean did y'all kiss which was really inappropriate Uh and justin immediately 
feels terrible about it because he knows how it looks to Yari. And Yari feels uncomfortable and doesn't really want to answer and says something like, I think she says yes, but like, where did you hear that from? Yeah. In other words, are you guys talking about this? amongst yourselves about me making out with your husband yeah and then becky starts explaining polygamy to her and what they're looking for and it's really important for us that this the wives are friends we can be best friends and i'm just like oh my god i would have just gotten up and walked the fuck out just walked out yeah 100 percent. i would not have stayed but maybe they were paying the bills so she's like well free food i don't care i would have walked out and i would not have explained myself it's not even worth my time or my energy Mm-mm. y'all are bozos yeah i gotta go and i would have walked out but i don't know why yari stayed i don't know either maybe she wants to be scissor sisters with um that woman doesn't want any part Becky? of that box honey <laughs> she doesn't want any part of that woman i don't think she wants any part of that man well, it seemed like she did from their last date. She was like, he's attracted. N- no. She's there again. She didn't want to kiss him, and he well. basically forced her to kiss him. <sighs> but, I mean, then she showed up for this date, so I'm not understanding this woman. Move it, on. Find another man. I know. It doesn't make any sense. And in her talking head, she's like, I was very nervous to be here because this is Justin's wife, and I'm not sure how she would take it or anything and i'm like well obviously becky's fine with it that's why she's asking if you all kissed and to me i'm like maybe you shouldn't have asked that but at the same time i don't know why like yari and justin are surprised that becky would bring it up yeah that's his wife yeah and she's there on your date well and this is your arrangement like becky knows y'all gonna be fucking in the boom boom room while she's there listening with a cup next to the masturbating (laughs) one hand on the cup one hand in her pants (laughs) Oh, 100 percent that's totally what yeah. it is it's mm-hmm. so creepy yes and then of course at the end of the date just like in true sherwood fashion becky's like yeah um so you're gonna continue dating us right are you into it are you into polygamy will you still de- date us and you're right. like mm, sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> i mean like most people don't really want to come out and say um absolutely not this is inappropriate i don't right. feel comfortable i feel like you guys are weirdos thanks for this weird dinner i gotta go most people don't have the heart to say something so directly so they'll be like yeah of course and then ghost yeah which is what i thought sarah was gonna do with the sherwoods same but she didn't she did it a lot better if you ask me but yeah. i think yari's just gonna ghost i'm kind of hoping so because these people are freaking weird man. and they keep getting dumped and i love to see it me too and i hope that we don't end their storyline here like i hope we get to see them <laughs> either go on more dates with yari or get dumped because i want to see justin get all sad again <laughs> well we see so in pathetic. the preview that yari's like i need attention from my man i don't want to share my man mm-hmm. and he feels like very strongly to say well i take care of my women i show up for my women i'm committed to my women yeah like mm. what's going Ew. on yeah he's like nick davis being like mm-hmm. no you all are in the orbit of me and you'll all get your sexual seduction it's gonna be fine (laughs) don't worry about it pretty ew yeah and he i think becky also said that yari is justin's type like she said it again they said this a couple episodes ago like oh yeah she's his type because she's latina and also she goes to the gym i'm like y'all are fucking weird so your husband has a fetish Mm -hmm. and he's fetishizing these poor women Mm -hmm. and going on dates with them when he's not like he's not attracted to becky is he I, I'm not. It doesn't seem. I don't see how he would be. Are like, you? No. <laughs> Who would be? Absolutely not. No. But I'm like, I wonder if they're fucking. Becky and Justin? Yeah. Oh, I think they're fucking. I think they're freaks. Oh, my God. Really? I think there's a swing. I think there are toys and implements. I think they're fucking. You yeah. think she pegs him? Oh, God. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. <laughs> I would love it. Yeah. And so they I want bet. a third. I think they want a third. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Nasty. Well, then also in the preview, we have Jasmine staying the night with the Davis family. Oh, gosh. And she's jumping on that 12 foot bed. Ew, get off my bed with your I bacteria know. and your virus and your pandemic. And your outside clothes. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, get off my fucking bed. <laughs> yeah, that's super weird. But I'm like, is she really going to stay in the bed with them on their first night together like i thought she was gonna like have a legit slumber party or something and sleep on the couch maybe she'd sneak into the boom boom room with nick later in the middle of the night but is she really gonna stay in their bed i doubt it oh my god that'd be so weird and then we have miriam flying all the way from michigan that's right and she's a muslim lady so she's fine with polygamy allegedly well so the merrifields though are evangelical literalist 
Christians. Such a good point. And she's a Muslim. Isn't there like some sort of an inherent problem with that? Yeah. Which just speaks to the fact that this is all about fucking and being on TV. 100%. Because if it was about your faith, it was if it was about the way that you Jesus. believe, then this doesn't make any sense to me. But none of it makes any sense to me. That's such a good point. I didn't even think about that because Garrick just creeps me mm -hmm. the fuck out. I was thinking about Natalia because in it starts, the preview starts with her on FaceTime or whatever being like, yeah, Garrick and Danielle flew back to America several months ago and I haven't heard from them at all. And I'm like, oh, yikes. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if he's just going to all these countries, yes, fucking all these all people. Yes, and all he's doing is banging these people. Oh my God. And Danielle is facilitating the entire thing. I mean, because by their account, the way they describe the way marriage works, once you have a commitment and then you have sex, you're married. Yes. So he's now married by virtue of his own belief around it right he's married to natalia and he's just going to ghost her yeah he's also married to roberta then yes by that same logic yes, yes. so that's this, it's all just about sex gross mm -hmm. i can't wait to see his cringe ass date with miriam though where he's like i think you're very beautiful though. and he's like petting, he's her, petting her again he's petting people <laughs> like, what are you doing and he's so unconscious and she's I like know. talking to him and he's just like hmm. <laughs> Like, ew. <laughs> I know his dead eyes. And Miriam's just looking at him with like lovey dovey eyes. She's like down in that wine though. Yeah. So maybe she's just like, <laughs> God, get me out of here. He's pouring that wine. Oh. Yeah. Very, very bizarre. I'm loving it though. I, I still love this show. I think yeah. it's so trashy. I love so it as well. Disgusting. We I have a it. few more episodes until June. Yes. Winding things down though. Yeah. And reminder after this is done and after Vanderpump Rules is done, we're going to be bringing back Sister Wives recaps. Okay, because some of y'all are still messaging me on Instagram. Wow. And still commenting on Patreon. We're going to bring them back, I promise. <laughs> we're also going to be picking up Unexpected. Yes. Miss Beatrice over here did a little IG poll as to whether people wanted to hear the recaps, and I guess people do. So yep. we're going into it. Do yep. we have to watch previous seasons? No. I've seen a couple of them. I haven't. But I haven't in like a year or two. Let's just freeball it. All right, we're just going to pick it up. Yeah. And we're going to have fun. Yeah. Like only we can, Beatrice. Yeah. Now, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we go? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. It really helps us grow the pod. So please and thank you. We'll be back later this week to talk of Vanderpump Rules reunion and the Valley. But until then, please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.